wonder these are real problems that some of us may have. Me. Do you ever get so <laughs> bloated when you eat that you feel like a balloon not ready to pop? Is that what is happening over <laughs> here? Mm, I don't know. Nicole I mean, has oh. an excuse for this no, belly so bloat. Right? She's excused right. from the bloat today. Our registered dietitian Lisa Gredzelanik is here with YourTastyLife.com to help those of you who aren't pregnant and aren't supposed to look like this. Because this <laughs> is how you feel sometimes. Well, exactly, right? right? I mean, and I tell you there's certain foods I eat and I kind of look like you. Like a food so, baby, yeah. yeah. This is an area I'm very familiar with. I work with a lot of my clients on beating the bloat and getting our tummy flatter and mm -hmm. figuring it out. So one thing I want to just mention before we get, get into it today is I want everyone to realize our digestive systems, we're, everyone has things that work differently for them. So it's not like all digestive systems are the same. Right. There's different imbalances and you really want to work with someone who knows what the heck they're doing to help you sort through it. Okay. But I brought some things today to talk to our viewers at home that are great places to start to beat the bloat. Okay. So first thing here, what we got in our first section is I need you to stop, slow stop. down, slow down our eating. When we um, eat fast, fast, we take in too much air. And believe it or not, about half the air in our digestive system is swallowed air. Really? How do we swallow air? Scarfing food yeah. down. We yeah. get more air in. Using straws creates more air in our stomach, as well as uh, chewing gum. Ah, okay. I never thought of that. So okay. if we slow down, we put our fork down between each bite when we chew our food, and that's a key point. That is a tip. Chew your food. Because yeah. how many of us, um, no, um, three bites Just, and it's down. Yeah. So when we um, put down our hatchet, a chunk of meat that's been chewed three times, there's a lot of stress in the digestive system. The enzymes have to work harder. True. The uh, acid in our stomach has to work harder. It needs to break down that food. It has to break it huh. down. So we want to chew, slow down, get those things in place. Then let's talk about what we eat that could be causing bloat. Now there are certain foods that naturally have some uh, more uh, fibers in them that are harder for us humans to break down. Things like cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, they just have a type of fiber in them that are even a little bit more difficult to break down. Is that why you fart a lot? Yes. And the reason is, and just and ask ask it. it is so true though, because <laughs> these fibers, gas. they go to the, st the gut, the stomach, the intestines, they get to the intestines and they ferment because the body can't break them down. So yeah. they ferment, we get gassy, we get bloated. So for example, if we have um, not enough fiber, that's a problem because think of fiber, which these are just all examples of is that fiber. What that is? What is so that? this is fiber that's in a cup of berries. Really? Okay. So that's amount of fiber. If I have this fiber, it acts like a sweeper for the intestines and it gets the stuff out of there. It kind of cleans your pipes. So if you don't have enough fiber, that's an issue. But fiber in and of itself, because we can't break this down. Fiber is non-digestible. So here's ah. beans. Beans, a cup of beans, here's all the fiber. So now my stomach acids and my enzymes got to go break down this fiber. It. Yeah. So you need it, but there's certain foods, certain vegetables will naturally cause you to be a little bit more bloated because we don't break that fiber right. down. Certain foods like gluten is another one where you know I can get in that uh, you know another uh, time, but gluten can be a problematic uh, uh, for people. For some people, cause yeah. bloating for some people. Okay. Now moving on, what do we drink? Ooh, carbonation. So we want to say goodbye to the carbonated beverages because all they do is bloat us. That means beer. So carbonated beverages will bloat you. Some people have lactose intolerance. About 50 million Americans, to be exact, have lactose intolerance. So milk will bloat you. You will notice though cheese you will do better with or yogurt and the reason is the lactose is very minimal in cheese the bacteria in the cheese eat it up the bacteria in the yogurt eat it up so we'll do well with cheese and yogurt if we have lactose intolerance but not cows you know not like the actual milk okay mm -hmm. then what do we want to drink to help beat the bloat there's lots of great uh, tea options we can really use. So peppermint tea is fantastic. Ooh. This is peppermint I grow in I my windowsill. Awesome. Peppermint's very oh. easy to grow. Okay. You could steep that with some tea leaves um, or make a little tea out of it with the tea leaves or just get a tea bag. Water is great for flushing again the system out. Mm. If water's boring, jazz it up, put something in it. But tea and water are really great for relieving the bloat. There's lots of things we could put in the water to, to five it up. So now what about if we need some help with our digestion? What if we need some aid to help us? So one thing that does not help digestion, contrary to popular belief, is acid blocking medication. When we take an acid blocking medication for long term, what are you doing? You're blocking the acid. Yeah. What do we need to break down food? We need acid and enzymes. Wow. So many people are more bloated on these acid blocking medications. So I would want to work with them to figure out what's causing the bloat. Sure. But what are other things we can utilize? We've talked about this a little bit in the past regarding digestive enzymes and probiotics. So again, there, there's the right thing for the right person in the right case. So this isn't a blanket statement. 
But uh, digestive enzymes can be helpful for many people. What is it? It gives you the enzymes to break down the food. And the probiotics are really healthy uh, to include because a probiotic is the healthy gut bacteria, and we need the right balance of bacteria in our gut, so we break down the food the best. Can I ask you, how would you even start? Because I think so many people, when we're trying to figure out what it is that mm -hmm. does it for us, can't even... I would start with the right. habits. But would you, like, write it down, which every little thing you're eating? I mean, because it's hard to even think right. of. Right, right. It's, it's a lot of times it's tied to food, so people notice, like, for example, when I eat uh, broccoli or cauliflower, yeah. I know I'm going to get a little bloated from it. That's just normal. Okay. But if I was one of these folks walking around, I'm like, God, I'm bloated all the time. Mm -hmm. Every time I eat... I would kind of start at step one. What are your eating behaviors? How are you? Is there certain food that you're eating that's causing bloat? Is there certain foods you're, or things you're drinking causing bloat? Okay. And if you're doing all that, then we then may look at this. doing some optimizing with enzymes and probiotics, things like that. Yeah. But um, lots of little things we can do that can definitely help us get, get the bloat under control. It doesn't have to be something you're living in with misery every day. There's things we can do for sure. Good. Except Good for this. I can't well, fix yes. that. 20 days, Lisa. That's Jason's pro you know, deal. <laughs> that's, that's his problem. <laughs> yes. I don't want to tell him what In a month, that'll be his problem, right? <laughs> right, right. A little one running around. <laughs> oh. All right. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome, ladies. We'll head to break. <laughs>